Welcome to AIN Debrief, where we take a deeper look at the most important or interesting aviation story of the past week with the AIN editor who covered it. I'm AIN News Editor Chad Trotvetter. This week, Charles Alcock, editor of AIN's Future Flight, discusses the recent influx of funding into several of the companies developing eVTOLs for advanced air mobility purposes. He also talks about progress in these and other electric aircraft under what is being now called Aviation 3.0. Okay, so uh, Charlie, uh, on the future flight side, uh, there's been a lot of uh, funding and um, other announcements for eVTOL as far as you know, money to progress the programs along. So um, over the past month, what have you seen um, in this terms? Yes, there was uh, quite a big explosion in activity, I would say, two or three weeks ago. All of it focused on uh, startup companies making eVTOL aircraft that needed significant cash injections to get to the next level. And uh, two things happened in quick succession. First, a company called Archer Aviation um, announced that it was going to do one of these. Essentially, it's like an IPO, initial public offering, but it's done through one of these special purpose acquisition companies where the, the SPAC is already formed and it merges with a company like Archer and essentially does a sort of through the backdoor merger. And just a few weeks ago, they they announced plans for that. If it goes through as planned, and there's no reason to think it won't, that will supposedly raise $1.1 billion dollars. And then just a couple of weeks later, Joby Aviation, which like Archer is a startup based in California, but it's actually been around for almost 10 years now, unlike Archer, which is barely a year old. They announced another one of these SPAC merger deals, and this will raise $1.6 billion. Now, just to give you some context, that, that kind of takes those two companies into like a different league of funding, and that should comfortably give them enough money to you know, complete the development of the aircraft that they've got in the works and you know, potentially get those into service. So that's very, very significant. And of course, it begs the question, well, who else is going to go into that category of, of being you know, super well-funded? Well, a German company called Volocopter, which has been widely rumored as, as being another candidate for a SPAC merger, it didn't do that, but it did announce another funding round that's raised about $400 million dollars um, just through uh, a new wave of private investment. And it's funny, you know, if you'd asked me six months ago, you know, is $400 million a big deal? I would have said, of course it is in the EVTOL sector. But now that figure starts to look small by comparison with these SPAC mergers. But it's it's very significant nonetheless. Yeah, Are we seeing a uh, bifurcation of the uh, companies that are, you know, kind of pulling ahead and the companies that are, you know, not really well-funded um, but have you know, grand plans? Is this is this the year when we're going to see that bifurcation between those two? I I think that's true, um, but I don't think it's going to happen in in a sort of completely uh, you know uh, black or white form. In other words, you know there'll be winners and losers right away. What I think will happen is this: the companies like Archer and Joby that are in a real hurry to get aircraft to market and to begin commercial services. I mean, they're basically saying they could have commercial operations up and running by 2024. You know, they now have the money where they could realistically try and do that. So you could say, well, where does that leave the people who don't have that much money? Well, some of them will probably never, ever raise the money, and and, and a good number of them might simply fall by the wayside as soon as, as this year. But other companies might be saying, you know what, we don't care about whether we're first to market. We feel we've got a good concept. And, you know, let those other guys go racing towards the finishing line and get there ahead of us. But we believe this market is going to take a lot longer to mature. And the first people there won't necessarily be the winners. And I kind of agree with that sentiment. I think it, it you can't just say the first couple of million dollar spec backed companies, uh, you know, it's going to be winner take all. I don't think that's the case. So, I think we will see companies like Volocopter and Lilium and uh, Vertical in the UK and and other companies around the world still making it to market. And I think what will count in the long run is not so much how much money you raised in the short term, but how viable your concept is. Did you Do you have all your ducks in a row? Have you really understood the so-called ecosystem for how all this is going to work? Yeah, there's but there's also 200 plus uh, designs out there in 
yeah. realistically only maybe a dozen or a dozen and a half uh, are going to... Oh, I, I think a, a tiny handful of those will make it. I mean, if you really pushed me, Chad, I'd say let's let's be optimistic and say maybe a dozen of them might make it. And, you know, of course, they'll have different applications. They're not all going to be looking to do uh, the same thing. And the main thing is, is air taxi service. So I think only a few of them will make it. Um, you know, maybe we should talk a bit about the business model. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to build the aircraft, but I think we also need to address what they're actually going to do with these aircraft. And what's different about the business model is that many of these companies aren't just going to build them and sell them to aircraft operators and say, okay, you go ahead and make some money with them. They actually want to be the operator too. And that's where we've also seen some news in recent weeks. So both Archer and Joby and in fact, uh, Lilium 2 and Volocopter have all basically said, yes, we're starting to do the groundwork now, working with cities where we could see the first of the air taxi operations. So within within a few days of making these announcements about the big uh, new funding uh, ventures that they're going through, both Joby and Archer you know, we're essentially confirming, yes, it's going to be in places like Los Angeles where we're going to start service. And Archer has actually launched into uh, being a member of a partnership established by the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti, who is actively uh, trying to get this rolling in his city. Archer also went to visit the mayor of Miami, and uh, he's called Francis Suarez. He, too, dreams of having air taxi services in his city. And so this is tangible evidence that that it's not just we're building a plane, let's brag about it, that they do have a plan. Uh, and I think that could be very, very significant this year. In other words, how far those plans get advanced. So what's the wider, uh, looking at this as a wider scope, uh, you know, what's being called Aviation 3.0, which is the electrification of the industry? What else is going on besides the EV toll side? Well, there is an awful lot going on, um, but we should say that the timeline for that is is generally longer. So, whereas the you know a lot of the Evatol front runners are saying, "Hey, you're going to be taking taxi flights with us around cities in 2024," the people who are trying to reinvent, you know, full scale passenger airliners, most of them aren't talking about getting anything into service until the back end of the 2020s, but they are making progress. So, for example, just a couple of days ago uh, in the UK, where I am, uh, a leasing company called Falco, which uh, you know manages assets in the regional airline market, uh, they announced an investment, albeit an undisclosed amount, in a venture called um, uh, Electric Aviation Group, which is working on a 70-seat hybrid electric aircraft. Of course, they're, they're hardly telling us any details about what that will be, but they're trying to raise $5 billion to get that into service by 2028. Uh, just today, I talked with a company called SE Aeronautics. They're based in Alabama. I'd never heard about them before, but they're supposedly raising money for a new uh, sort of medium-sized airliner, if you like, with quite a radical new uh, design with three wings. Uh, again, don't press me on whether that's even viable. We, I barely know enough to comment on that. What I'm trying to illustrate is there is a lot of activity out there in terms of trying to bring quite revolutionary designs to market. So on the broader sense, uh, is there any news on the the electric motor and battery front? That's that's going to be key to uh, both both the EV tall and the, uh, you know, these regional airliners, uh, they're electric. Yeah, certainly. Well, you know, the, the broad consensus still is this, that if you're talking about all electric um, aircraft operating in the near term, meaning, you know, within four or five years, then really that only means uh, very small EVTOL aircraft with no more than about four or five or six seats flying pretty small distances. I mean, there are some people like Lilium who say that they can they can beat the limitations of the batteries by having a fixed wing and, you know, essentially getting up to altitude and then flying like a normal aircraft. But for the most part, you're talking pretty small and pretty short range. Then at the same time, you've got people who are saying, yeah, that, that's fine. The battery technology will improve, but for now, let's go down the hybrid route. And so just today, for example, Ampere, which is a real pioneer in hybrid electric propulsion, it announced that it's going to start doing some flight demonstrations for its two um, modified aircraft. It, you know, One is a, a version of the Cessna 
three three seven. The other is a version of the of the Twin Otter, and they're going to start testing those in the UK of all places. So there's there's a lot of work going on on that score. And then in the background, you've got people like Airbus who are saying, "Hey, it's fine. The rest of you." startups you go out there and grab all the line like that's fine we'll keep quiet but they are working in a very determined way on potentially bringing hydrogen powered airliners into service by the middle of the 2030s um so you know it's 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 a bit like an iceberg we're we're sort of looking at the very top of that iceberg and we're seeing all this frenzied activity around evitols but below the surface where we can't see so well there are larger airliner projects that are that are coming along too yeah, it should be really interesting to see what happens over the next year. Um, I think that's going to be kind of the key for the technology that they're working on. I, I think it will. And it's, uh, you know, I, I sort of said it at the end of 2020, but in a bizarre way, given how grim things have become for air transport because of COVID, you know, this is this is not a bad time for these projects to be advancing because, you know, so much of aviation is kind of in suspension as as to, you know, when it's going to return to some sort of normal level of viability and profitability and these longer term visionaries you know have some space to to move on to things that that will be around when you know we have to believe that covid you know will be largely under control by 2024 so it's in a way it's a good time um, for these projects to be advancing right any other thoughts charlie no that's really about it that's been enough to keep me busy i thought it would be a quiet start to the year but uh, how wrong i was (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> okay. Thanks for listening to AI and Debrief. Another podcast episode will air next Friday. In the meantime, go to www.aionline.com for the latest aviation news from AIN. <laughs>